welcome to Fantastic History. I'm Clay. I'm Sarah. We're a husband and wife duo who enjoy telling each other about amazing events, people, and mysteries throughout history. So today, I want to tell you about some inventors and their inventions. Okay. Now, some inventions change the world in good ways, mm-hmm. like, um, let's see, penicillin. Sure. Pretty good invention. Uh, the wheel. Yeah, that's a good Love one. Love that. Use that one quite a lot, actually. Yes. Others are less useful. Um, some are more like uh, novelties. Snuggy. The Snuggy, a, a classic. The Chia yeah. Pet. Oh, that's a good one. And some are completely disastrous. <laughs> oh, okay. And those are the ones we're going to be talking about today. I was really hoping that's what you were going to say. But first, let's talk about... The Segway. Oh, God. Guys, he is obsessed with Segways. I only own three. <laughs> not that obsessed. Okay. I don't actually own any Segways. <clears throat> but I would not allow that. On September 26th, 2010, entrepreneur Jimmy Hedled, um, Hesselden, Jimmy Hesselden died. Oh, RIP. He was riding his Segway on a... <laughs> Sorry. You got to hold on, I'm man. I'm sorry. I gotta get through funny. this. It was funny. He was riding his Segway on a trail, and while letting another hiker pass by, he backed up and accidentally rode his Segway off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> Quite a way to go. <laughs> what a dork. Now, sorry. I, now, ironically, he was the owner of the Segway company. Yeah, so there you go. There you go. You, you get what you give. Now, this story is pretty pretty well-known, pretty widespread, but it often gets the facts wrong. It often claims that the inventor of the Segway was killed by a Segway. Oh, okay. That's not the case. Inventor Dean Kamen is still alive. Good for him. And the Segway is not his first or only invention. In 1960, uh, 1976, he created something called the auto syringe. Oh. Which was later used to create the world's first insulin pump. Yeah. So. So the Segway guy yeah. is also the insulin pump guy. Yes. I got to stop talking so much shit. That's pretty cool, huh? That's really strange. Yeah. That's really very odd. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> But a Segway isn't supposed to be dangerous. It's supposed to be fun for the whole family. Not okay. nerdy at all. All right, honey. For something a little more daring, let's turn to Franz Reichelt. Born in 1878 in Austria-Hungary, Franz had moved to Paris and, beca- and he became a tailor. After the death of Thomas Selfridge, who was the first person to die in a powered plane crash. Whoa. That was in uh, 1908. Franz began to experiment with a flight suit that um, when experiencing free fall, such as, what, such as what may happen when a pilot self ejects, mm-hmm. it would open up and turn into basically a wearable parachute and, and flight suit. Oh, I see. So you wouldn't have to worry about having a whole, a whole parachute mm-hmm. attached to you. Your Your flight suit would be... The parachute. Right. You turn yourself into a flying squirrel. Yeah. Okay. So so this this exists now. People can... People, you see people like uh, jumping off of cliffs. Yeah. And activating their Spider-Man <laughs> flight suit. Uh-huh. Um, but it's not really... The, that's not really a parachute. Right? right. Right. He was going for something that was not less thrill-seeking, more saving lives. Gotcha. But the initial tests of this were not very encouraging. His flight suit was strapped to dummies, and it failed to deploy after being dropped from a height of, a height of uh, five stories. But committed to his concept, Franz began to test the suit on himself. Oh, blessed Franz. Okay. But from lower heights, not five stories. Sure. But it still wasn't working quite right which resulted in at least one broken leg if that's all he is damn lucky in 1912 franz believed he had nailed the design and decided to show it off publicly oh god 
very publicly. Oh, God. He announced that his demonstration would be dropping a dummy from the first deck of the Eiffel Tower. Well, at least he's dropping a dummy and not doing it himself. And it would be, uh, he, he contacted the press and onlookers to come in, like a big crowd to come and watch <sighs> this brand new invention. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, you kind of think of like the guy who invented Kevlar, I think, um, wore Kevlar and, and had people shoot him in the chest. A woman invented Kevlar, but that's fine. Was it a woman? A woman invented Kevlar specifically. Okay. Yes. That's cool. Yes. Well, she may, she she may have been smarter to have someone shoot. She would have been, yeah. So maybe just like the first like bulletproof vest. I'm Could sure. Be. Yeah. Could be. You know, a lot of these inventors, they are um zany? Zany is a great word for it. Thanks. They're a bit zany. Yeah. However, on the morning of February 4th, 1912, when Franz arrived at the tower, he was wearing the flight suit. Franz, what the, Oh my god. It's fine. Whatever. His associates <laughs> begged him not to jump. <laughs> God almighty. But he was confident and firm in his decision. Mm -hmm. He was zany. Yeah. A bit. Mm -hmm. But also very confident. You know. So right. in front of the press and a large crowd, <laughs> Franz leapt from the 180 foot high platform oh my god and plummeted to his death yeah do you think for the morbidly cu morbidly curious the event was filmed oh my god and the footage is easily found online are you serious can we watch it we can Yee! but let's wait till afterwards well yeah sure um sadly his, his design was not ready <laughs> god bless franz yeah Oh, okay. But at least his invention only ended his life. Right, yeah. The next invention did not kill its inventor. But it did kill many, many others. Oh, good Lord. Alfred Nobel was uh, born in Stockholm, Sweden in 1833. Uh -huh. The family moved to St. Petersburg, Russia when he was nine to support his father's new business as an explosives manufacturer. <laughs> this venture was good during the Crimean, Crimean War when they were manufacturing military equipment yeah. for Russia, but um, afterwards the business went bankrupt. Okay. Now, Alfred had grown into a brilliant man, fluent in five languages, studied chemistry and engineering, and excelled in all of his studies. He was a okay. very smart man. Right on. When his family moved back to Sweden, he and his brothers uh, stayed to salvage the business. The most efficient explosive at the time was gunpowder. Hmm. But a new explosive compound had just been discovered. Nitroglycerin. Oh, bother. Much more powerful, but much more unstable. Yeah. And dangerous. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, Alfred and his brothers began to manufacture nitroglycerin in a new plant. But Alfred was also wanting to find a, a way to improve the safety of the liquid. Sure. In 1865, he invented a detonator called a blasting cap. Oh. This allowed a more safe and predictable detonation of explosives. Gotcha. It's a big deal. Sure. But nitroglycerin was still so dangerous that in 1864, one of his factories blew up <gasps> and killed his younger brother, Emil. Oh, no. And several others. Alfred was so distraught by the loss of his brother that he, three years later, he had patented a new invention to replace nitroglycerin, mm -hmm. dynamite. Oh, good. Safe, safer to handle and use, dynamite, along with his blasting caps, catapulted Alfred Nobel to fame and fortune across the world. Sure. He continued to develop all sorts of new explosives and new inventions. Uh, but as his fame grew, so did his notoriety. Mm. Because while innovating explosives made it easier to mine and to build infrastructure, it also made it very efficient to kill people in war. Uh-huh. Perhaps this is why he made the decision late in his life to alter his will. Now, this story is not confirmed by historians. Uh, we're not entirely sure if it's real or fabricated, but it is told that his brother Ludwig passed away in 1888 in France. But French newspapers mistook his the death as being Alfred's. Oh, awkward. Just a little misunderstanding, right? Tends to happen. 
So Alfred was able to see what people thought of him after his death. Oh, God. All right, Tom Sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, he did not like it. I bet not. They referred to him as the Merchant of Death. Oh, okay. Sorry. Alfred, that rules? Just go with it. Well, he did not go with it. Oh, he was, I would have. He was, <laughs> he was so distraught that his legacy was going to be that of bringing pain and misery and death to the world because originally his 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 he wanted to bring he wanted to make the world a better place tony stark right yeah there you go yeah good old tony stark over here so he made the, the decision to rewrite his will so that all of his wealth would be used to establish a trust from which annual prizes would be distributed to people who benefited mankind mm -hmm. in the fields of chemistry physics medicine literature and humanitarianism yeah Later to be known as the Nobel Peace Prize. Exactly. And I'd say he was pretty successful in ensuring his legacy would be positive. Yeah. Because most people, when they hear Nobel, mm -hmm. they don't think of the Merchant of Death. No. They don't think of Wile E. Coyote blowing himself up with a stick of dynamite. But not everyone is so lucky. <laughs> Which brings us to the last inventor of this episode, a man named Thomas Midgley Jr., Oh dear. Who many consider to be the worst inventor of all time. I am so excited. Not a bad inventor like uh like Stu Pickles. Oh. But a bad inventor for I guess the legacy he left. Oh. So Migley was born on May eighteenth, eighteen eighty nine. Hey man, that's my birthday. There you go. Eighteen eighty nine and everything. Eighteen eighty nine and everything. Yeah. <laughs> In Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, um, Migley was uh, was also a tinkerer in chemistry. Fun. And he used chemistry in a lot of his inventions. Uh, while working at General Motors as an engineer, he was working to develop an additive to gasoline that would reduce engine knocking. So engine knocking is when the fuel burns unevenly and it makes loud noises huh. and can cause a lot of damage to your engine. We don't really hear a lot about it today. Because fuel is a lot cleaner and, and works better. But back then, it was a big deal. So, Migley developed an additive that significantly reduced engine knocking, tetraethylid. Hmm. But here's the problem with lead. Yeah. It's poisonous. Mm -hmm. So, burning a poisonous additive in your vehicle seems like a pretty bad idea. Oh, my God. And, yeah. And General Motors knew this. But they had a patent, so they just went with it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Great. They're like, well, this 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 additive we have a patent on, we will go with that one. Wonderful. And they knew that marketing lead gasoline might not go over super well, so they changed the name to ethyl gasoline. Uh... A new state-of-the-art anti-knocking compound. The burning of lead gasoline deposited lead into our water, <laughs> our air, and our soil. Great. Researcher Rick Nevin found that there was a connection between the rise of lead in our blood and the rise of violent crime. Yeah, I'm stunned. Yeah. Oh, my God. Because lead is a neurotoxin. Uh-huh. And even small amounts of exposure can result in enough poisoning to greatly affect us. Nevin's research looked at the levels of lead in the blood of preschoolers since 1935. What he found was that as blood lead levels rose, the amount of violent crimes also rose. Yikes. And when their blood levels began to fall after lead gasoline was removed in the 1970s, violent crime also reduced. That's so upsetting. Yeah. And he saw this trend hold true across multiple countries, not just ours. Great. Mig uh, Migley's invention had poisoned several generations of humans uh, reducing our intelligence, raising our violent behavior, and causing serious long-term health problems. Way to go! The invention was so severe that even 50 years later, our gas stations still called their fuel unleaded gasoline. Yikes. Right? You messed up that bad. <laughs> that all this time later, we don't know why we need to know this, uh -huh. but we know we need to know it. Way to go. Great. Great job. But Sarah, we're not done. Oh, okay, cool. 
Because Migley's, this isn't Migley's only disastrous invention. Oh, perfect. After inventing ethyl gasoline, uh, he was still working with GM when he synthesized the first chlorofluorocarbon. Oh, God. CFC. Mm -hmm. They called this invention Freon, which was... It proved to be a great refrigerant, Mm -hmm. much better than the other chemicals that were currently being used. They were toxic and flammable and explosive. You don't want your fridge to blow up. That would be very upsetting. Exactly. CFCs were discovered to have more uses, such as a propellant in aerosol products. Mm. This earned uh, Midgley several awards and accolades, but three decades after his death in 1944, we discovered that all these CFCs were releasing that we were releasing to the atmosphere were not toxic to human beings, but catastrophic to the Earth's ozone layer. Yeah, which this in- guy is a real piece of shit. Can I just <laughs> say, like, wow, you've ruined literally everything, sir. Yeah. Wow. So, oh my God. his invention uh, created the hole in the ozone layer. Wonderful. We've heard so much about. Great. And the ozone layer is still damaged to this day, mm. and it's going to remain so for decades to come. Yikes. But we did reduce the amount of CFCs used <laughs> across the world, as we did the lead. So at least there's that. What an incredible idiot. Like, to be that smart well, and he, well, so catastrophically dumb at the same time. Well, I don't think he was dumb. I think he was just like, he. Did, no one knew mm-hmm. that... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, lead is a different story. Yeah. But CFCs, this was brand new. No one had any idea what damn. I mean, they didn't know until he was long dead. Yeah. That this was going on. But it's it's still his invention. Yeah. You know? Managed to do it twice. Yeah. Great. As stated earlier, Thomas Migley died in 1944 after contracting polio. The hmm. disease left him disabled. But he still had the strength for one last invention. No, thank you. That's enough from you. He devised a set of pulleys and ropes to allow him to lift himself out of bed without assistance. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, he was paralyzed, paralyzed sure. essentially. As with his other inventions, it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> until one day, he became entangled in his <gasps> invention and was strangled to death. Oh my god! Environmental historian J.R. McNeil stated that Migley had more adverse impact on the atmosphere than any other single organism in Earth's history. Great. Appreciate it. Pretty wild. Yeah. Now, there is one more inventor I want to talk about whose invention is now responsible for feeding half of the world. But his invention was also used to kill millions of people. Oh. But that story deserves its own episode. Oh, okay. Which is going to be my next episode. Okay, that's great. So stay tuned for that. (laughs) It's my first little teaser. But it's not going to be next week, just to clarify. Correct. It'll be in two weeks. Yeah. Unless something unexpected happens. Yeah. So... That's all I have for today. That's all I can take for today. Pretty crazy stuff. Well, if you have a famous, if you have a favorite inventor, invention, what's your favorite invention? Maybe like um, Pop Tarts, probably mine. <laughs> Please let us know by uh, sending us an email, fantastichistorypod at gmail.com, or you can send us a message on Instagram or threads. We are Fantastic H Pod on both and don't forget that you can you okay (laughs) you can (laughs) you can rate us did you know had you heard you can rate and review us on apple podcasts Mm -hmm. on stitcher Mm -hmm. on pretty much any podcast platform you're listening to you can actually rate us and review us what it's a brand new invention that's my favorite invention mine too well, mm-hmm. Pop-Tarts. Well. So please do that if you have the time. It really helps us out. And um, tell your friends about our little show. We want to spread the word about all these crazy things we learn about. Until next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.